what is up guys in today's video i want to go over swift generics and swift generics are a way of saving a lot of time and increasing our code reusability and if you do not know about them yet it's definitely time that you learn it and i'm going to go over the very basics of it and you're going to notice immediately that you will be able to apply this to your code as soon as you finish this lesson. So first let's go ahead and face a common problem that we have with most functions. So let's go ahead and say function highest number. And inside here, we're going to start with number A, which is of type int. And let's say number B, which is also of type int. And what we want to do is print the highest number. So we're going to use some very simple logic for this. And it's going to be if A is more than B, we're going to print a is the highest number else we're going to print that b is the highest number so it's some very simple logic now of course let's go ahead and run the code and here we're going to put 12 and for b we'll go ahead and put 20. so if the output is correct we should get b is the highest number and as you can see in the console we have b is the highest number if we change a to 32 we'll get A is the highest number. So the logic works perfectly. But now we face a very simple problem that is, what if we want to add a floating point number or some other form of comparison? Well, now it becomes a bit more complicated because we can't just go ahead and type in 32.0 because when we run the program, it's going to give us an error saying that it was expecting an integer and not a double. And this is where generics comes in. It really simplifies this so that we can choose to add the exact same code with just a very minor adjustment. So without editing this code at all, we can go to our function and add these angle brackets and add a T, which is just a naming convention for a generic type. So T can stand for any type. It can be a number, it can be a boolean, it can be a string, it can be any type you want. And that's what the T represents. Now, instead of having integer defined here, let's go ahead and replace that with T. And we also have to go ahead and say that this is comparable because we want to tell the program that we are going to compare these types, that T is a comparable kind of type. So it's going to be either a boolean, a string or a number, anything that can be compared with these operators is going to be considered a correct type. So now that we added this code, we can go ahead and rerun the program. And you'll notice that even if we add a decimal here, it's going to say that everything's all right. And we can go ahead and do 21.12 and 12.0 and rerun the program. And we're going to get B is the highest number. So as you can see, now it doesn't matter if we insert integers or doubles, the program is still going to be able to understand how to compute this. We don't have to be very explicit with what we enter. And, and that was the first example. Now I'm going to go ahead and create one more example for you guys. So here we're going to go ahead and create a new function called what type is it? And it's just going to take a type parameter right there and we're going to provide a parameter that says input, and that's going to be of type, of any type. And whatever type we decide to insert, we want to return a string. So this is great because now we can enter whatever type we want, and we're always going to get the same output. But for this example, we're going to go ahead and print that the type you entered was, and here we can backslash so we can enter some code, and we can type in type of, and we'll just insert the input. So regardless of what input we insert, we're going to get this string printed out and it can be an integer, it can be a string, it can be even a complex data type that we have no clue what it is. We can enter anything we want into this function and it's still going to give us the same output without having to specify whether it's a Boolean or an integer. It's just going to simplify this a lot for us. So we don't have to duplicate the same function for each data type. And here we can just go ahead and return okay, regardless of what happens. And in general, you might want to return some JSON or some other calculation based on what you input. But for this example, I'm just going to show you that we can insert any type we want and it will be fine. So now let's go ahead and call this function. So what type is it? We can start with a, uh, 
string of text. Then we can call what type is it. And we can create a list of hello, 12, and false. And finally, let's go ahead and add one more, which is going to just be a double. Now, when we go ahead and run this program, we're going to get three different strings. One's going to say you entered a string, you entered an array of any, and you entered a double. So as you can see with the power of generics, we saved a lot of time and effort, not having to specifically create functions for each type. And that was just a glimpse of what generics can do. Later on, when we create more complex apps on this channel, I'm going to be using generics more and more because they really do save us a lot of time and effort. But that just about covers the very basics of generics. And as always, guys, I really hope this video helped. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. But otherwise, with that being said, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.